Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It is Nadine here back with another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving y'all a story time on an incident that took place with my racist clinical instructor, okay? For those of you guys who don't know, I am a nursing and public health double major. So I do have clinicals and things of that nature. Um, and there was an incident that took place that was race related. And I'm going to tell you guys exactly how it went down because, listen, there was no way in hell that woman was going to sit in front of me with some racist nonsense coming out of her face and me sit there and not say anything. There's no way in hell, okay? And I'm going to tell you guys everything that went down. But before we get into that, make sure that you guys subscribe, like, comment turn on your post notifications so that you can be notified every time i post a video and follow me on instagram if you have not done so already my instagram is at coily main and it will definitely be provided for you guys okay so we're gonna hop right into the video so for this clinical rotation it was for a class that i had called community health and for this rotation we had home visits so the way it worked is we were paired with a preceptor or an instructor, whatever you want to call it. And um, it's basically just a nurse that we're assigned to and they send us the patient's address, we go to the patient's home and we assist the nurse with whatever it is that needs to be assisted with. This particular patient um, just so happened to be black and my preceptor just so happens to be white. So. Um, I contact my preceptor, she gives me the patient's address, and she tells me to meet her there at a specific time. I think it was around 9.30 in the morning or so. So, you know, the next morning comes around, I get to the place, it's an apartment complex. So I text my preceptor to let her know that I'm there, and she's like, okay, come upstairs. Um, and she tells me how exactly to get to the patient's room. Cool, so I go to the patient's room, the instructor opens the door, she greets me, I greet her, whatever, right? Everything is cool. We go into the patient's room, we're helping her out, and a lot of times, patients just talk, okay? They go off, they talk about whatever it is that they wanna talk about. And this patient just so happened to bring up Facebook, okay? Now, as she's talking about Facebook and her friends and blah, 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 my preceptor takes it upon herself to bring up the protests that were happening at the time, okay? And during this time, it was the whole George Floyd, Daniel Prude situation that was going on. So you already know what was happening, okay? So she takes it upon herself to bring up the protests. Why she found that appropriate, I don't know. But she took it upon herself to bring it up. So she says, you know what I saw on Facebook? I saw somebody repost something about the protest and talking badly about police Ugh. saying that that police are just shooting at random protesters and beating up random protesters but at the end of the day they're cops why would they cause harm to anybody who's doing no wrong cops don't do that so I looked at her and I said no they actually do they actually do do that. That's the whole purpose of the protest. Because if things like this weren't happening, there would be no reason for people to protest, okay? So she then looks at me and says, well, you know, at the end of the day, if you do something wrong and you commit a crime, you should expect for there to be consequences. I said, you're right. There should be consequences. Just like how if a cop takes an innocent life, there should be consequences. The same way that you feel like regular people and civilians should have consequences for whatever crimes they commit, police should face the same consequence. There's no reason why an innocent man should be murdered in the middle of the street in broad daylight and a cop get off scotch-free just because he's a cop. You understand me? And I looked at her and I said at the end of the day, we all know who they target. She then responds to me by saying, well, you know, police officers, they have a really hard job. It's not easy being a cop. You put your life on the line every day. I said, I never said it was easy being a cop, but at the end of the day, it's a career that you chose. Nobody forced you to be a cop. 
And if you're gonna be a cop, you be a good one and you do the right thing. You don't be out here taking innocent lives because we should be able to trust police officers, but instead we're being murdered by them in the middle of the street. She then looks at me in the black patient's house in front of me and the patient and says to me, well, you guys are killing each other. So just like that, well, you guys are killing each other. So I looked at her and I said, that has no relevance to the situation. At the end of the day, we all know what the root of the problem is. We all know what this country was built on. We all know what this country stands for. So for you to bring that up, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even make any sense. And the fact that she would even say that as if white people don't kill each other, as if Spanish people don't kill each other, as if Asian people don't kill each other, there's good and bad in every race. But it's not fair that one in particular face, we go through so much and for nothing, for nothing. But for her, that was justification and she found it appropriate to speak that way. You know what I'm saying? So after I said that to her, she looks at me and she says, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's equal. It's just frustrating that all of this is happening because everybody's equal. I said, yeah, that's what you may say. But at the end of the day, that's not reality. Otherwise, these problems would not be taking place. OK, she then looks at me and she goes, you know, white people, we don't have privilege. I looked at her and I said, you do. Her eyes got wide, okay? She was shook. She was not expecting for me to respond to her. She was not expecting for me to counter her statements. She was just like, oh, this is just a student. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. But no, ma'am, you're not going to do that, especially in a black patient's house. How dare you? And you show yourself. Listen, when I tell you she showed herself, like, how dare you bring up a conversation and a topic that sensitive in a black patient's house? Are you kidding me? And the reason why I felt so triggered to talk is because I knew that that patient wasn't going to say anything. She was an older woman. You know what I'm saying? And this is your nurse. This is somebody who's supposed to be taking care of you. And the way she's talking comes to show her perspective when it comes to black people. Okay? It shows. So obviously, the patient isn't going to say anything because she's in a position where she is vulnerable. What is she going to say? This nurse is the one who's taking care of her, the one who's poking her, the one who's giving her meds. You know what I'm saying? Who's to know what the nurse might do out of spite if she was to speak up for herself? And it's sad that we have to think that way, but at the end of the day, that's our reality. That's how we have to think as black people. Okay? Yeah. After that whole thing happened, she was shook and immediately she decides that she's going to end the conversation. She says, okay, you know what? Whatever. Wrong place, wrong time. Let's just not talk about this because clearly we're not going to get anywhere. So she proceeds to, you know, do whatever she has to do with the patient. But you could tell that she was flustered. You know what I'm saying? You could tell that after the fact, she knew she messed up. She knew she messed up and she was trying to make a little small talk with me, trying to lighten the mood. But if I'm being completely honest with you, I didn't want to talk to her. She's like, okay, so yeah, now we're going to go to the next patient's house. Da -da -da. And I just stood there and I was just looking at her like you have some nerve. You have some nerve. How dare? Well, you guys kill each other. Like, are you out of your fucking mind? Are you like she clearly she must have been out of her mind and she was so angered by the fact that I didn't agree with her statements like what did you think I was gonna do look at you and say yeah uh-huh yeah you're right no no ma'am you met your match today yeah and it makes me question how many other people she might have done this to it really makes me question you know what I mean but anyway so we leave the patient's house now we get downstairs we have to sign out i sign myself out i sign her out and i leave and i made sure to keep myself composed i made sure to stand tall you know what i mean because at the end of the day i don't care who you are i don't care if you're my professor i don't care if she was the fucking dean of the school i have a voice and i'm gonna use it okay when the time comes for me to use it I'm going to use it. You will not run over me. You will not disrespect me. You will not disrespect my people. And I said what I said. <laughs> so we exit the building and um, 
she's like okay so I'll see you at the next patient's house I'm like okay I'll see you there so I get in my car and I drive to the next location I pull up to the driveway she's already parked so I pull up behind her she comes out the car right we both get out the car at the same time and she's walking up to me and she looks at me and she's coming at me with a totally different tone because before she had energy for me okay but now she's coming up to me all calm and collected and she's like well you know we should really avoid talking about politics in the patient's home you know it's really inappropriate it's not the right place to do that and at the end of the day you know i've never treated any of my patients poorly regardless of what they look like i'm 58 years old you know so i've seen a lot of things in life trying to invalidate me because of the fact that she's older and i'm younger oh i'm 58 and i've seen a lot of things in life from all different types of people you know okay well if that was the case i'm thinking to myself like if that's the case then why would you say what you said she then proceeded to be like you know and at the end of the day there's tons of different people in america but that's what makes america great <laughs> i'm like are you kidding me right now like is this really happening to me right now like is this really happening to me right now how are you going to come up to me and tell me not to talk about politics when you're the one who initiated the conversation in the first place? Make it make sense. The only reason why she came up to me and told me not to talk about politics was the fact that I countered her statement. Because when she was ready to say what she wanted to say about Black Lives and Black Lives Matter and, you know, the murders of Black people that happened at the hands of police, she was quick to say whatever it is that she felt. She felt that entitlement to say whatever it is that she wanted to say and she didn't think when she looked at me and she looked at the patient and she said well you guys are killing each other she didn't care she didn't care you know but now she's shook and she's scared because of the fact that i came back at her and she don't know what i might do so now she's like, we shouldn't talk about politics. Now that I speak and I use my voice, now it's let's not talk about politics. So at that point, I was so angry and I was so heated. And I was just looking at her like, I don't even know what the fuck to say to you. Like at this point, I don't even have anything else to say to you. I was so disgusted by the situation. I was so offended by the situation and I was so angry. I was so angry that she had the nerve to come up to tell me, let's not talk about politics in front of patients. Baby, you initiated the whole situation. But of course, she's not going to take accountability. Of course, she did not apologize to the patient. And of course, she didn't apologize to me. So when we're in the next patient's house, I'm so upset. I can't even focus my heart listen i kept myself together but inside i was hot okay i was angry i was boiling my heart was pumping my heart was literally racing inside my freaking chest i could barely focus when we got to the other patient's house but i kept myself together because i knew i was gonna take it further okay so what i did was as soon as i got home I contacted the head of the nursing department at my school. I contacted both of the professors of the course that the clinical was for, both of the professors from community health. I contacted the both of them and told them exactly what happened. Now keep in mind the time that this happened was the second to last week of us having that clinical, okay? So I called the instructor and I told the instructor, listen, I know that I only have one more week with her, but I don't want to be with her. So do not put me with her. Either you give me another nurse or I'm not going. Straight like that. Because there's no reason why I should be subjecting myself to that kind of treatment, that kind of discomfort. Like it's obvious that there's already tension there. I don't want to be around her. I don't want to be around that energy. I'm not dealing with it. Period. So... I didn't deal with it and what they did was they ended up giving me a replacement like case study assignment to do in lieu of the clinical that I wasn't going to go to because they couldn't find me another nurse. So in addition to that, I ended up writing a letter of grievance and I sent it to the head of the department at my school, which it also went to the supervisor at her company that she worked for. So I actually have the letter of grievance right here. 
and I decided that I want to read it to you guys so that's what I'm gonna do so what I said was to whom it may concern, I, Nadine, am following up with an incident that occurred on September 15th, 2020 with my nurse preceptor, blank. I'm not going to say her name. During one of my clinical rotations, the incident took place at an African-American patient's home when my nurse preceptor took it upon herself to bring up a political, racially motivated topic, such as the protests and police killings of black and brown people that have been taking place. I'm bringing it to your attention because I believe that she was highly insensitive, lacked empathy, and disrespected the patient as well as myself. She opined that police were not violent and that their actions are justified when it comes to the protests and the murders of innocent people of color. I counter her statement by saying that some police are violent and that there is one particular group of people that's targeted and treated more unfairly than others. She responded to me by saying, well, you guys are killing each other in an African-American patient's house with no hesitation, as if to justify police actions against black and brown people. After saying that, she stated, white people, we don't have privilege. Appalled by those statements and observing my patient's expression, I responded by saying, oh, yes, you do. Surprised by my response, she quickly ended the conversation. She left the patient's home without apologizing, and when we arrived at the following patient's house, she came up to me stating that we should avoid talking about politics when she was the one who initiated the conversation in the first place. She took no accountability and did not apologize to me after it being very clear that I was uncomfortable and offended by her statements. I am incredibly disappointed because given the fact that she's my nurse preceptor, I should be able to feel comfortable around her and be inspired by her but instead she displayed behaviors that I would not emulate. She does not model the college's virtues and does not embody compassion that would be expected in an instructor or a nurse. I'm certain that she's aware of the sensitive nature of the topic and the environment that she was in, which shows her lack of empathy, sensitivity, cultural awareness, and total disregard for people who don't look like her. I hope that she becomes enlightened by this incident and does some self-reflection and addresses the innate biases that she may not even realize that she has. I truly hope that my concerns are taken seriously and that this is not just another racial incident that gets swept under the rug. Yours truly, Nadine. So, that's what I did. I sent that letter and when I finished that clinical rotation, the way it works is half of the class has the clinical rotation for half of the semester and then the other half of the class takes on the clinical rotation for half of the semester so when i finished um and they sent out the list of the clinical instructors that the rest of the class would be paired with i decided to take a look at it because i was curious to know whether or not she was still working for the school because you know when an employee gets fired i'm pretty sure the employer is not allowed to disclose that information. So I wanted to find out for myself. So I looked at the list to see if her name was still there and her name was gone. Do you hear me? Her name was gone. They got rid of her because that's what I do. I get things done. There's no way in hell I was going to allow that to happen and not speak on the situation. But um, yeah, she got fired. She got fired. I'm not one to wish something like that on somebody, but if that's what it takes for you to learn your lesson, then that's what it takes. And that's why when it comes to my black students, my black and brown students, you use that voice. You have a voice for a reason and when the time comes you use it and you use it for the greater good sometimes it's not even for yourself but when you see something happening and you know it's wrong and you're in that presence you speak up you do not sit there and allow things like that to slide because that's how they get comfortable that's how people get comfortable and situations like this repeat itself and as far as I'm concerned you could tell that she was very comfortable she was very comfortable and it's obvious that nobody's ever told her about herself and it was about time that she got told about herself okay and that's the truth 
and I feel like I did the right thing because I advocated for that patient because I knew that patient was not going to advocate for herself and that's why you see all of this injustice not only with police but in the healthcare system as well trust and believe a lot of these doctors a lot of these nurses are racist and they don't care about the feelings of patients who don't look like them that's why more of us need to get in there get in there okay but yeah that's my story time on the incident that took place with my racist clinical instructor i hope you guys enjoyed and once again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Let me know what other videos you want to see from me. And yeah, that's basically it for this video. I'm out. Bye, y'all.